Hello friends, welcome in, welcome to Code Wars Code Katas, episode number 64. Um, Twitch is having issues, I, can, I couldn't go live on Twitch, so I'm live over here on YouTube, 30 minutes late. Um, but yeah, yeah, welcome in everyone. Um, so for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you can uh, go over to the Twitch chat on uh on Twitch if you want to. Those messages will show up in my overlay as well. And all of the chat commands will work on Twitch. They don't work on YouTube. Uh, but welcome in. Glad to see you all here. Uh, today we're going to be solving some Code Wars uh, code katas. <laughs> um, I, don't, I won't see them in my... Actually, I might see them in my overlay because my overlay is running. So if, if Twitch things happen, it'll show up in my overlay. Yeah. Uh, I don't play video games. Not really. I mean, every now and then. <laughs> Thank you very much, the Shivas, for the gift over on Twitch. I appreciate that. Um, cool. So today we're going to solve Code Wars Code Katas. Um, we've been doing the show for years. Uh, this is the second one in a, in a while. And Nookie Poo, thank, thank you for the bits over on Twitch, too. Um, but if you go over to GitHub, uh, to the Coding Garden organization, there's a Code Katas repo. All of the code I write tonight, all of the problems I solve, all of that's going to be uploaded here. Uh, and today is episode 64. Um, apparently I didn't push episode 63. Episode 63 is there now. Uh, we're, we're gonna do episode 64. Um, and I, I'm only gonna be here for about two hours. I mean, I'm already running 30 minutes late, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep the problems fairly easy. And Dynamic Voyage, thank you for that gift to Mewtru. Was that a, a specific gift? Um, or was that random? But that's awesome. Thank you very much for the gift. Um, I think we'll start around 7Q. So if you're new to Code Wars, you can go to CodeWars.com and sign up. And um, all of the problems are user submitted, and they range in difficulty. So 8Q is the um, easiest, and 1Q is the hardest. And Nuki Poo, thank you for more gifts. <laughs> I should stream on YouTube all the time. Wow, uh, I really, I really appreciate that, Nuki Poo. And the Shibas and Dynamic Voyage. What's up, funny boy? Um, so I think we're going to start with 7Q. It's uh, on, the, on, the, on the easier side of things, but typically what I like to do is I'll solve it uh, with pseudocode, so just talk through my solution without real code, and then we'll turn it into real code, and then we'll solve it three or four other ways and talk about all the various ways we could solve the thing. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and I think we'll get right into it. Uh, I'll do some quick hellos. I'll do a speed run hello of everybody that's here so far. Um, and then, and then we'll go. I mean, I've seen I've seen other streamers that have a, that have that have had a hype train when they were offline. So I don't think Twitch cares. Also, I'm mad at Twitch right now. I can't go live over there. Like I I literally like I have a schedule that I'm trying to maintain, and I'm 30 minutes late. Uh, so I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh well, this is the old one. This is this is the chat overlay from. Two and a half years ago, from so I used to so let's let's do a quick history lesson for all the people that weren't here. I, you might have been here then, distant since I don't know. But uh, before I was a Twitch affiliate, uh, I was streaming to both YouTube and Twitch. Uh, and then when I when I became affiliate, I started only streaming on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean Theo's been live for a few for a few hours, right? So like Twitch is having the issue now where people actually can't go live. Um, if we look on Twitter. Uh, Twitch status, Twitch support. The thing is, it, it happened earlier today. We said they resolved it three hours ago, and then now it's happening again. And it's kind of hilarious to watch because you see all these people responding. These are literally streamers that are trying trying to go live, and they can't. Um, regardless, I'm here on I'm here on YouTube for today, Sebastian. Welcome in. Um, what did I, what else did I want to say? Um, oh yeah, if uh, if any if you see any confused people over on Twitch, 
Um, just do exclamation mark YouTube live, and that should give them. That's not the right link. Oh man. Uh, watch this. Thank you, Mike the Tree Climber. Welcome in. Um. <laughs> the intern pushed broken code. Maybe. Uh, it's really interesting that, like, it doesn't affect people that are already live, but people that are trying to go live, uh, it affects them. But let's do a quick round of hellos. It's going to be a speed run just so we can start writing some code because I don't have long. Uh, what's up, Ahmad? Welcome in. Hello, Kristen and Surya and Mark Boots and uh, Mart. Hello, Java Guy. Um, welcome in, Sam Samuel. And hello, Curly Bracket AI and Derek. Uh, what's up, Octavian and Helios and Lysander. Um, and hello, Punisher and the She Boss and Cherry Bomber. Um, welcome in, welcome in. What's up, Vulture Bike and Alicia Ray, also known as She Boss. <laughs> what's up, uh, Mark Boots and I Rossum and Burnt Rice. Hello, hello. Um, what is up, Adam and Pond Garden? Nookie Poo, how's it going? Um, and Vulture Bike, what's up, Pop and Dynamic Voyage, and Mike the Tree Climber, uh, welcome in, Burnt Oil Rice, I might have said hi already, uh, Gislian, hello, hello, welcome in, welcome in, um, what's up, Eckertreat, Eckertreat, <laughs> uh, Funny Boy, how's it going, welcome in, what's up, Distant Sense, and Asalaam Asal Alaikum, welcome in, <laughs> hello, um, uh, Sebastian, hello, welcome in, and, and, Bithereal, hello, what's up, Tom, and Robin, how's it going? You're a mod over here on YouTube, Robin. <laughs> uh, Robin was streaming over on Twitch the other day, I tuned in for that. Okay, uh, let's solve some katas. Uh, I'm going to start easy, like I said, I'm going to start with a 7Q. Uh, let's just look at this one, check the exam. So this says, uh, the first input ray is the key to the correct answers to an exam like A, A, B, D. The second contains the student's submitted answers. I see. So we get the basically the answer key and then the student's answers. Uh, return the score for the array of answers, giving plus four for each correct answer, minus one for each correct and incorrect answer, and zero for each blank answer, represented as an empty string. Well, if I were a student and I didn't know anything, I would just pass in blank answers, because then I get a zero instead of a negative four. Uh, <laughs> regardless, <laughs> let's do it. Nuke, really? Yeah, thank you so much, Nuke. Appreciate that. Yeah. Welcome in, Muhammad, as well. Good evening, Mark. Welcome in. Let's do this one. Um, oh, <laughs> last time I solved one in Rust. We're going we're gonna to go back to JavaScript. We're going to do JavaScript. What's up, Andre from Portugal? Welcome in. Um, and if you want to try solving this one, feel free. Uh, click that link, and then whenever I'm done with my solution, you can share your solution as well. Um, so here we go. And actually, I'm just going to do this all locally. Um, is this it? That's not it. Code bin, code wars. There it is. Um, I'll probably continue the weekly challenge. I just didn't know what to do for this week's challenge. Um, and I do have to make people more aware of that there is a challenge because it was mainly, I mean, I, I was happy with the participation, but it really was just um, like mods and a few VIPs. There weren't many random people that did the, the community challenge. Um, here it is. Check the exam. All right. So what I like to do is uh, just create a local file where I can solve this thing. Um, and uh, that's going to allow me to solve it in multiple ways. And I have more, more screen real estate instead of trying to solve it in the, uh, the Code War solver. So uh, I'm going to have my function there. And then we have a few basic tests. Yeah, I mean, and so I guess <laughs> not even, even the SheBoss didn't hear about it. Um, I mean, I, I, I mentioned it in uh, actually the, the email. Email list is the only place I mentioned it. Cool. 
And welcome in, Sauce. Uh, you haven't missed anything. This is the first one. Um, let me add a command really quick for current kata. So you can check that out. Check that out. Cool, 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 cool. All right, and we're going to use uh, Quaka to uh, run the code in my editor. We are almost there. Yeah, that's better. Cool. <laughs> no, no worries, the Shivas. I mean, I don't, I don't know of another way to, to reach people because I, I mean, I, I think I'm, I didn't. The thing is, I didn't at everyone on the Discord whenever I uh, mentioned the weekly challenge. So maybe I can do that. Um, but hello. Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but your name starts with a P. So hello, P. Uh, you were watching my videos for so long. I'm really cool, and your video is very helpful for learning web development. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for being here. All right, let's solve this. So we're given two arrays. Basically, we need to check if each value in this array is equal to this value in this array. And if it's not the same, then we have to adjust the overall score. So what we need is a place to store the score. Um, and that should start off at 0, so uh, initialized to 0. So the score starts as 0, and then we start to modify it as we go. Um, we will uh, iterate over, uh, or let's say iterate up to the length of the first array. So I believe the problem description says that um, yeah, so it says that they're always the same length. So we can really just use the length of either one of them, and we know that they're always going to be the same length. So we just need a for loop that goes up to the length of one of them. Um, we need to uh, check if the value in array 1 is equal to array 1. Uh, if it is, then we will increase the score by 4, which I think the rules were. So uh, plus 4 for each correct answer. So um, I think it's a, it's a, no, this is an 8, no, so it is a 7Q. I think this is a 7Q because it has array iteration. So uh, most of the 8Qs actually are like just work on basic types. Um, and I think because you're dealing with two arrays here is why this is 8Q. But I don't know. It's kind of arbitrary. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, and then array 2. Thank you. So uh, increase the score by 4. Uh, if not, uh, decrease score by, uh, by 1. Um, and then if it's a blank answer. So we have to check if it's blank first. Uh, check if array 2 value is blank. If it is, do nothing. <laughs> and then else check if the or the values are equal to each other and if they're if they are increase the score by 4 and if they're not increase the score by 1 and finally after all of this iteration um, we can uh, return the score the overall score cool so there's our pseudo code let's turn it into real code so a place to store the score initialized to 0 that's just going to be let score equal 0 like that so i define a variable um, and um, uh, this is what we're going to be operating on. And so now I need to iterate up to the length of the first array. Um, and so for this, we'll just use a for loop. We're going to use i, start it off at 0, go while i is less than array1.length. Um, length, like that. Uh, and on each iteration, uh, we increment i. So we'll do plus equals 1. Cool. There we go. We have ourselves a little loop. And now we can do the logic. So uh, check if the array2 value is blank. Um, what we mean by that is we need to say array2 bracket i, because that's going to give us the specific value at that index. And we can just say if that is equal to the empty string. So that, that would mean that it's blank. And if that's the case, um, we do nothing. Um, so I guess really what we want to do is probably want to wrap the rest of this and if it is not empty. So if I do, actually, let's write it like this. So if the value in array 2 is not empty, 
then we do all of this. Because if it was empty, then we don't want to do anything. And so we just have like an empty else statement. Um, so now that we know that the value in array 2 is not empty, we can check uh, against the value in array, array 1. So we'll say if array 1 at i is equal to array 2 at i, um, that means the values are equal to each other. And that means that they got this answer correct. So in this case, we need to increase the score by 4. So we'll say uh, score plus equals 4, like that. And then if they weren't equal to each other, then we will decrease the score by 1. So here we can say score minus equals 1. And at this point, we've done it. Um, so at this point, we can return the score and see if we did it right. Um, and we can see down here that we got it right except for uh, this last one. <clears throat> and I see an issue um, that we didn't account for. Um, so I returned negative 3, and they're expecting it to be 0. Um, so I think the issue is we should never, the score should never go below 0. Um, so I think I'll just handle that right here. So modify the score based on what the current uh, answer was, and then we'll do a check. We'll say if score is less than 0, set score equal to 0. So that way, we basically never go negative. Uh, and that should handle that scenario. Great. Yeah, and then uh, Oscar asked, <laughs> why, why did I remove the comments? Uh, mainly because uh, this code is fairly self-explanatory. Um, and I'm, I'm also kind of demonstrating how, basically, I'm, I'm turning in, I'm turning a, a human thought about, pro uh, like a problem-solving thought, into a code. Um, so that's, that's why I removed the comments as I went. Um, yeah, I would say comments are usually useful if you're doing something tricky. But I would say this code is extremely straightforward. We're iterating over arrays. We're checking values. We're modifying variables. There's nothing in here that we're doing that is tricky. We might add right here that says uh, handle uh, the case where score is negative. But at the same time, that's the same thing as score is less than 0, right? Um, so I, I think even that comment is redundant. Cool. Uh, so that solved it. Let's actually just let's plug this into Code Wars and see uh, if it works uh, for them. Let's test it. <laughs> cool. So uh, that solution works. Um, we, can, we can clean this up. Um, and I wouldn't say clean up, because honestly, this is, a, this is a solid standard solution. If you're new to programming, um, and um, uh, you're looking to solve a problem like this, I would say this is the way to solve it, because you're practicing all of the fundamentals. You're practicing uh, variable initi initiation, uh, loop iterating, uh, array access, conditionals, variable modification. Th this is like, if you can do this, you are a programmer. So you should definitely be able to solve it this way. But yeah, we also could do it with the reduce. I think before we get to the reduce, uh, we'll do it. Uh, we'll turn this for loop into a, a higher order function, like a, a for each. Yeah, and the Shibas has a good question. So, do I want the negative score check inside of the loop? What if it gets negative but then back to positive? I think we want that to happen, and I think that's 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 the issue here because if um, uh, the expected result for this last one was zero, and that's what let me think that. Um, Um, we should go back to 0 before calculating the next score, because it could go positive and then negative and then back to positive. And um, yeah, I don't know if it would affect it that much if we put it outside of the for loop, but I have a very strong feeling that it should be in the for loop. <laughs> yeah, and, and like we, we, we could do it after, but I think it has to be inside the for loop. We'll see. Let's actually, let me read the instructions. Um, oh, I see. If the score is less than 0, return 0. OK, never mind. Never mind. We absolutely can. Uh, we can do that. So instead of this, so we'll, always, we'll return the score here, and then otherwise return 0. So if the score is less than 0, return 0. OK, you all convinced me. And also, the, the, description, the problem description said that's what we were supposed to do. Um, I was just thinking that, like, it, if it never goes negative, then that would be a different value based on the other um, uh, test answers. 
Cool. Welcome in, Ashlyn. Uh, we are solving some Code Wars code katas. If you want to give it a try, you can click that link. Um, I solved it this way. I'm going to try to solve it uh, with uh, a for each function now instead of a loop. OK, so right here, uh, I'm going to do array one dot for each. And that's going to give us each um, value. Um, and we can now take everything that was in that for loop and bring it into the for each. Um, in this case, we need access to i because we're trying to access i for array 2. Um, and we can get access to that right here. So uh, whenever you're using the for each higher order method, uh, it gives you access to each value in that array. And it gives you access to the current index. Um, and now instead of array 1 bracket i, I actually can just use value because that's, that's the same thing here. Cool. And that works the same way. It's just a slight refactoring, basically using a higher order method instead of a for loop. Um, cool. Let's go deeper. Let's uh, use a reduce. Can we immediately go to reduce here? I think so. So the way to think about a reduce is uh, if you have a variable outside of a for each, and then you're modifying that variable inside the for each, and then you're using that variable afterwards, this is a prime candidate for a reduce. We're essentially reducing an array into the overall score. Um, so here are the steps you take. Change the for each to a reduce. Um, add the accumulator, which is going to be this variable here. And then set the initial value here. And then now we need to return the score on every iteration. Um, and this gives us the same answer. So essentially, uh, we've taken that, that uh, and we can, we can improve this a little bit. I'll show in a second. But we've taken this for each, which was modifying a variable and then using it. And ultimately, this whole reduce gives us back the score. So the uh, accumulator here is the value that we're operating on. And because we return it on every iteration, we're using that same value every time. Um, one thing we could do to clean up here is we could say um, return score minus 1. And here we could do return score plus 4. This should have the, the same result, but it, it's an early return instead of just returning at the bottom. So that uh, appears to do it as well. Um, and yeah, the tricky part here is we always need this logic. Um, so we kind of do need to store it in a variable, so that way we can check it and then return it. <laughs> I see what you're I, I, I see. OK, so we could actually do, if we do math.max, that would be, OK. I'm going to do this in a separate solution, but I, I like what Mark Boots just did there. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we want to return math.max of this whole thing and the value 0, like that. Oh, now things are getting weird. Um, because so this this reduce is going to result in the score. And the logic said that if that score is negative, we need to return 0. Um, and the maximum value of some negative number in 0 is always going to be 0. But if this is greater than 0, then that's going to be the maximum value. So that's, that's really clever. And that does it as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing we could do is um, we can make this an early return. So we can say um, if array at uh, array two at i doesn't have a value, just return the current score because we don't want to operate on it. Otherwise, um, if the values are equal to each other, return score plus 4. Otherwise, subtract 1 from the score, which means it was incorrect. So this is even smaller. <laughs> I would say that like our goal isn't to make this the smallest code possible. 
Um, our goal is to um, write a, a readable and understandable solution. And I would say, as long as everyone around you, like on your team or whatever, understands reduce, then this is probably an okay solution, this one here. Um, but like I said, if you're a beginner programmer, this is an okay solution as well. And you could stop there, at least for now. In a month or two, come back and do the for each. Um, okay, I am gonna submit this one on Code Wars and then we'll, we'll move on to another one. Nice, let's attempt it and then we'll see how other people solved it. Yeah, reduce is not, I would not, I would say reduce is not intuitive. <laughs> it is, is definitely not intuitive. You have to be used to it and you have to know what it does to be able to look at it and understand it. But I would even argue that even programmers that understand reduce, it takes them longer to figure out what a piece of code is doing when reduce is used versus when just like a regular for loop or a for each is used. Um, okay. This is the top solution. Um, pretty straightforward. That, that's our that's our for loop solution. So we have a for loop that iterates. If they're equal, increment by four. If it's empty, increment by nothing. Otherwise, subtract one from the score. Very good. Um, they did a reduce as well, but they have really bad variable names. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do this. Use, use good variable names. What's up, Mesley? Welcome in. Yeah, standard for loop solution. I'm curious, like nobody has done the math.max solution like like uh, that was suggested. Here it is, finally. But again, people are solving it with really unreadable code. <laughs> um, cool, all right, that's fun. Um, I'm gonna add a link to this in the readme and uh, we'll move on from there. Um, this was a 7Q. I think we'll move on to a 6Q. Um, we've got about an hour and a half left. <laughs> well, welcome in, JK. We're solving some code. We're writing code, and uh, we're, we're doing our best. Um, If you are a complete beginner, I would say take a look at this YouTube playlist. Um, it has uh, all of the past episodes. So this is pa this is episode uh, 65. Uh, we've been doing this for years. Um, but if you go watch that, that intro video, that tells you how this website works. And then each of these videos is just me solving problems and talking through my process. So you can, you can learn from that. Uh, I'm not going to do a 1Q. I've only attempted, I think, two 1Qs, and they took me a very long time. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, don't want to be here for hours. Um, should we do one more 7Q, or should we just move on to a 6Q? How's everybody feeling? Put it in chat. Uh, type 7 if you want me to do another 7Q, or 6 if you want me to do a problem that's slightly harder. One. <laughs> Most people have said six. All right, we'll get harder. We're gonna get gradually harder. Now one Q is as hard as it gets. Um, make the dead fish swim. Let's see what this one's about. Write a simple parser that will parse and run dead fish. Dead fish has four commands. Is this a thing? Can we look it up on Wikipedia? What is a dead fish? Dead fish is a very odd interpretive, interpreted programming language created by Jonathan Todd Skinner. Um, what is a dead fish? <laughs> so increment, decrement, square, and output. Weird. Okay, so deadfish is a real thing, um, and it has four commands. Invalid character should be ignored. So, 
we parse this and then we give the output. Increment, 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 square, decrement, output, square, output. So is 8 squared 64? Uh, it's called dead fish. Here, I'll, I'll link you to this, this Wikipedia article. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it's quite like the, the brain F language. Uh, I mean, it's, it is weird. <laughs> Um, I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna solve it. This is the one we're gonna do. Uh, so if you want to try to solve it, there it is as well. Um, it's just, I think it's just gonna get weird because basically, as we parse, parse each character, like we we d define like an output array, and um, we then are pushing new results into that output array. So let's give it a try. Um, I'm gonna pull this code down locally. Uh, Twitch is having issues. I mean, they might have resolved it by now, but I was uh, 30 minutes late for stream because I tried for 30 minutes going live and I couldn't. Um, they just, uh, they're having technical difficulties at Twitch headquarters. <laughs> These always output the same. That's not useful to me. It's not useful that that both of these result in the same value. Let's see if we can find another example. This one should output zero. But does it output an array of zero? Oh, I see. We have an array of all the outputs. So anytime you output something, you push into that array. So, okay, that, I think that makes, that makes more sense to me. Um, so if we put this program in here, we should get an output of zero. Um, just a second, I need to fix my microphone. Oh, congrats, Blaze. Just got a new job as a senior software engineer. We're using Vue. Nice. Glad to hear it. Um, and then here is another example. Parse of that should give us back zero. And then this one gives us back 288. I just wanted a lot of examples because those first two weren't useful to me because it has the exact same output. So I don't really know if I'm doing everything right. But in this case, this one outputs 288. Um, yeah, yeah. So this should print 288. This should print 0. That should print 0. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Now let's do our best. So the, these are the rules. So we basically have to look at each, each uh, operation. And uh, we'll have like a running value. Um, but these are the rules. Um, yeah, so I'm guessing we always just have one single running value that gets operated on. So something like um, current output or current. Let's just call it result. It starts off as zero. And then we look at each character in the input. So let's do, um, and we also have our output, which is an array like this. And then we'll look at each character in the input. So if I do data.split, that turns a string into an array. So we can do for each on it. And that gives us each um, operation. Um, and then we can basically just do this inside the inside of here. So we can have like a switch case on the operation. See you later, Nuke. Uh, have a good night. Yeah, do a switch on the operation. And then we'll have a case for each one of these. So the case of I does this. Um, 
Is that how a switch statement works? Okay, we'll get there in a second. Um, really? My linter really wants me to do that? That's. I disagree. I'm going to disable ESLint. Um, uh, a reduce would work for this one too, I think. Because cause basically you're reducing the um, the whole array until until oh, the the, oh, the you're reducing a string a, 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 an array of char individual characters into an output array, uh, but for now we'll just we'll just do this. So um, if the case is I um, then we say result. Increments by one. Yeah, the default case would be uh, basically we come across a letter we don't know about, and then we would do nothing. Um, so uh, purely because <laughs> my my linter doesn't like or is doing weird things with switch statements, I'm going to do this with if statements, uh, and that's that's fine with me. So if the operation is equal to i then we increment the value. So we can say result plus equals one. Um, else, if the operation is equal to D, we then um, decrement the value. So we'll say um, result minus equals one. And then if the operation is equal to S, we square the value. So result equals result raised to the power of two. And then otherwise, we, uh, if it's equal to uh, the operation is equal to O, we then push it into the uh, output array. So we'll say output dot push result. And then after all of that's done, we can return the output. Let's see. Let's see if this is all they wanted. Um, this wasn't too hard if this is what they wanted, but maybe there's a tricky case. Let's see. Uh, we're going to start Quokka. So we've done it. We got 864, 864. Um, this one gave us the wrong value. This one gave us the wrong value. And this one gave us the wrong value. Yeah. Um, math.pal, maybe? No, that gives us the same thing. Um, Yeah, so um, those worked. This one did not work. We got the value 3. Um, I want to change this back to this. Um, yeah, but Josie is mentioning we could do times times equals as well. The initial decrement should never go negative. Oof. Here, OK. Well, we don't have any rules about that here. Um, let's read about the language a little bit more. Uh, Yeah. 
Initial increment should be zero. Yeah, so I think that's the main issue is what are we incrementing by? Oh, increments the value. Well, I thought it said value was initially zero. Like this. I don't think so, Mark Boots, and mainly because we're getting these correct. Um, so the, the last value, 64, is squaring 8, which was the result from before. What's up, Cheddar? Welcome in. Yeah, I'm just I, Yeah, I don't know what this means. <laughs> this, this is like one of... Uh, this is like the the least instructions that I've gotten from a from a from a code kata. Deadfish has four commands. Huh. And I think see, I think we're doing increment right because we're handling these scenarios. <sighs> Maybe the the examples we pulled from Wikipedia aren't accurate. Oh, good call, David. Um, thank you for pointing that out. The thing is, I prepared the email before I figured out that I was going to go live on uh, uh, YouTube instead. Yeah, this is silly. So they did, they're not testing for other, <laughs> other things. Um, so apparently, you don't have to test for all of those. And we, 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 we've got this one right. Um, I'm just going to submit it. This was a weird one. Um, overall, pretty straightforward. You basically take the problem description and then just implement it. Um, yeah, I'll show how we would do this with uh, um, with the reduce. This is though. It's going negative one zero. It should go zero one. So it never. You never get a negative value. Let's see. If result is less than zero, result equals zero. Yeah, so that fixes this one. But then this one is wrong. <laughs> I think the rules for the language that they gave us were just way too simple compared to the real language. I'm just going to leave it like this, because these were the only uh, test inputs that they gave us. But I will show you how to turn this into a reduce. So uh, same thing we did last time. Basically, we have our accumulator. In this case, output is our uh, accumulator. And we kind of have, we have two, two accumulators. <laughs> we have result and output. Um, because we want to keep track of the result on each iteration. So I'm going to handle that by putting this into an object. Um, so in the reduce, we will start off where the result is 0 and the output is an empty array. So we're basically reducing to an object. Um, and then um, where am I? I'm here. And then on each iteration, we want to return the result and output. Um, objects, but what are these? We will destructure them from the accumulator, and we'll change this to a reduce. And then we want to return that whole thing dot output. So we are. Uh, this one got pretty tricky, <laughs> but basically uh, our accumulator is an object and we're destructuring it to pull off result and output, mainly so that I don't have to update this code. But then after pulling it off, we return it as the accumulator as an object again. And then when it's all done, we return the output property. And that seems to work as well. Regex replace it. Oh, that would be, okay, I have a, yeah, that's that's fun. Let's do that. that. Um, Yeah, let's figure out how we would do that. So we have result and output 
and then pass it a regular expression that matches each of the characters. I D S O. Would that work? Or I guess really we just want to, we don't need the, the matching group. Um, and then we have a replacer. That gets too weird. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, we probably could figure it out. I don't think it would be... Uh, I think it would be more of just like a challenge of can you do it with a regex versus should you do it with a regex. OK, uh, I'm going to leave that there. And then um, let's do another one. We'll do another 6Q because that one was, was fairly easy. Let's see, multiplication table. Um, your task is to create the cre to create the n by n multiplication table of size provided in parameter. For example, when given the size of 3, yeah, so we return an array of arrays. That should be pretty easy. We're basically doing lots of multiplication and keeping track of like the row and the column. Let's do it. Um, I do want to put this in the readme. Let's make some multiplication tables. Again, this only has one test, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Um, this one should be pretty straightforward. We're really just creating an array of arrays. You think the accumulate function would take an accumulator and the reduce function would take a reducer? Yeah, I think technically the function that you pass in to reduce is the reducer. Um, but it reduces over an accumulator. <laughs> um, but yeah, OK, so we have the multiplication table, which is size. But when you think about it, a multiplication table is just a grid. So it has like 1, 2, 3. And it's if, in this case, if the size is 3, 1, 2, 3 across the top, and then 1, 2, 3 across the side. And so then it's 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, uh, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3. So we really just need two for loops here. We want to, um, let's say we have the uh, table, which is going to be an array. And then we're going to have a loop that goes from i up to the size. And instead of calling it i, let's call it um, row. Mm. Row? No, column. Let's do column first, because we're going to go, I don't think it matters, but we're going to go column, column first. <laughs> Um, and then we need an, an inner loop that does the row, and that also goes to size. So um, I know that usually you don't want nested loops, but this is this is a scenario where you use a nested loop. It makes a whole lot of sense to do that. Um, and then we for uh, for each row we need a row of uh, an array that represents that row. Um, so we'll do it like this, and then um, we'll push that row into the table array. But now we need to push each multiplication value, so we just push row array of uh, column times row. Um, but in this case, we don't want to start the for loops at 0. We want to start them at 1, and then go up until the size, like this. 
Um, the the one row and column is shared, so it should only print once. Really? Let, let me let me see. Um, let's see if I did it right. One, two, three, two, four, six, three, six, nine. Yeah, it, it's not. It shouldn't be that tricky. Um, I didn't have to do any special logic here. We basically just have the nested loop, and then we we have the the multiplication within. Um, I just realized I didn't I didn't share this link. Cool. I'm going to put this solution in, see if it tells me anything different. Then we'll think about some other ways to do it. But this 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 way was pretty straightforward. Um, I guess it, it would be cool for me to show you like how to create or how to do a loop without, uh, how to do a for each on a range. Because uh, JavaScript doesn't have range like you might have in uh, other languages like Python. Um, but it is possible to do something similar. So let me show how we would do that. Yes, yeah, so you can do array.from. So array.from will create an array um, of a given length. And so if I do this, you, you pass it an array-like object. You pass it a, an object that has a length property, basically. And that will create an array from it. But if I pass it this, we actually uh, get um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, all of the values in the array are now undefined. And so array.from also accepts a map function, which is going to be each value in the array, in this case, or each value in the array like object. In this case, nothing, because they're all undefined. And then uh, the index of each thing. Um, and so really, what we can do is like two nested array froms, um, where this i value is the row, or let's do column. And then inside of here, this i value is the row. Um, and then we have our um, our logic kind of the same way. So create a row array, push this in. The only difference is we're going to have to add one because uh, the row and column values here are um, uh, these are indices, so they start off at zero. So this is going to be column plus one times row plus one. Yeah. So. The underscore is just because I want to. I'm not going to use that variable. This is actually the value. Think of this like the value in a map. And this is a function that's basically getting called like a map. But this array-like thing that I gave it has no value. So every single value is going to be undefined. So I just called it underscore because we're not using that using that variable. Yeah. Oh, no worries, the she boss. I I I don't feel like you're talking too much. <laughs> I appreciate uh, I appreciate you saying things because then I know people are still out there. Yeah, so th this is just uh, uh, I'm ignoring it, and it is uh, in a lot of code bases you might see variables with this name, and it typically means that like that variable isn't used. But I can't I can't just do this. Um, I have to put something there to represent that value. Um, yeah, that I guess you're right. Yeah, actually, what I can do now is I can just return the row array and then return this whole thing. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, we're going to move on to a slightly harder one. <laughs> we'll do a 5Q. That's really cool. I'm, I'm proud of this solution. Um, and then we can make it even shorter if we change the variable that gets passed in to just the word length, because then we can do this like that. Nice. Um, and also, oh, wow, check this out. Wait, wait, right, right? No. I was going to say, like, do we have to do the push thing? I think we do. Because we want multiple arrays in the, in the outer one. I mean, technically, we could do, like, a... Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is, like, if we return this... Yeah. Oh, wow. No, no way. No way. No way. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This still works too. And that makes sense. So this inner array is basically creating each of the row arrays. So this, so this inner array from is doing this one, then it's doing this one, and then it's doing this one. And uh, each one of those is now a, a resulting value in the in the overall array. Wow, I'm I'm submitting this one. I wonder if anybody on on, on Code Wars has done this one. It's nice. Yeah, technically we we don't have to push into the array. We could just set it to a value. I like pushing into the array. I don't just like saying, oh, they did it. They did it here um, slightly. They used map. I would argue that this one actually is more performant because if you were to do map after array.from, and they're not really using array.from, they're doing um, array apply array with a given size. Um, but if you do dot map, that means it has to create the array first and then call the map function. This function that we're passing in is basically the map function that gets called as the array gets created. So it's it's a bit more performant. Yeah, they did it here. They made it really, really short. <laughs> nice. OK. Um, let's move on to a harder one. And then I'm, I'm probably going to go. <laughs> Um, let's see, I was supposed to be done 5.30. I guess technically I could still go for another 30 minutes. We'll go for another 30 minutes, but I'm thinking this 5Q is going to take me 30, min 30 minutes to solve. Um, here we go. Uh, and did I put this one in the readme? I didn't. All right, here we go for a 5Q. Um, let's see, perimeter, perimeter of squares and a rectangle. I, I have uh, full authority to veto any one of these. I don't, I don't like the look of that one. I'm not going to do it. Uh, gap in primes. The prime numbers are not regularly spaced. For example, from 2 to 3, the gap is 1. From 3 to 5, the gap is 2. From 7 to 11, it's 4. Between 2 and 50, we have the following pairs of two gap primes. 3, 5, 5, 7, 11, 13. OK, a prime gap. Maybe we'll do that one. That's just a lot of description. <laughs> I don't know what I, what I would expect, though. Like, They're coding problems. They're going to be hard. Uh, let's pretend your company just hired your friend from college and paid you a referral bonus. Awesome. To celebrate, you're taking your team out to the terrible dive bar next door and using the referral bonus to buy and build the largest three-dimensional beer pyramid, beer can pyramid you can find. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, a beer can pyramid uh, will square the number of cans in each level. One can in the top level, four in the second, nine in the next, 16, 25. Complete the pyramid function to return the number of complete levels of beer cans you can pyramid you can make given the parameters of your referral bonus and the price of a beer can. <laughs> okay, a beer can pyramid will square the number of cans in each level. So there's one on top, and then um, and that's level one. Level two is two squared, which is four. Level three is three squared, which is nine. Level four is four squared, which is 16. Level five is five squared, which is 25. OK. Each level is the level squared number of beer cans. That's how much it would take. So we can take the bonus, divide it by the price of the beer can, and that's how many beer cans we have. And then we start building the pyramid one level at a time until we run out of beers. And whatever level we stop at, that's the answer. Yeah, so this is doable. It just took me a second to try and understand what it wanted us to do. Uh, let's do it. Seems fine.
this. Let me put this in the readme. Here we go. Let's put this function here. Let's write it this way. Let's have our test. This one has lots of tests. I like that. Cool. Let's let's code. So the total beers is going to be our bonus amount divided by the price. And we will do math.floor of that. What's up, CC? Welcome in. I'm doing good. Just writing some code. So that will divide it and then drop the decimal because you can't buy a fraction of a beer, I would assume. Um, so total, total, not beers, total beers. So this is how many beers we have. Um, and uh, now we start at the top level. And then we increment uh, for each loop. So we'll say while total beers is greater than zero. So we're just going to keep uh, subtracting from the total amount of beers by building each each level. So we'll say uh, total beers minus equal math.pow. So we'll take the, the level um, and raise it to the power of 2. And so total beers now needs to be a let variable like this. Um, and then we increase the level by 1. So now we're at level 2. And then we just return. So we'll say uh, if total beers is equal to 0, then we just return the level that we ended on. Otherwise, that me means we went negative, and we need to go up one level. And so we subtract one. That's it. Done. I did it wrong. <laughs> um, do we always just return the level? So my function is returning two, but it should be one. We want to return the number of complete levels. I guess we could just do this right here. So we'll say if uh, total beers is now less than 0, we need to return the level before it. Do I start the level at zero? I thought I wanted it to start at one, though, because one raised to the power of two is just going to be one. Um, breaks when it's nine, though. Is my issue math.floor? So there are four total beers when we have $9 at $2 a beer. So we can actually do level one, because that's just going to be one, uh, one beer. And then level, well, no, level two takes four beers. So we need five total beers, and we only have five. I mean, we only have four.
Oh, never mind. We do want four. So my code is outputting two, but it should be outputting one. And that makes sense because um, if there are only four total beers, we can only do one level because we only have enough for level one. Um, if total beers is no, not if so. If it's less than how much we need the next time around, then we return the current level, right? <laughs> Um, uh, the, I, I'm using a tool called Quaka.js. Um, you can install it for VS Code. Um, and it will run the code and show you the output. Oh, level plus one. That's it. OK, I think I've solved it. <laughs> That's it. Um, basically, we, OK, so first off, subtract the number of beers it took for this level. When, when it's one, we're just subtracting one because it's one raised to the power of two. Then we need to check, do we have enough beers to complete the next level? And if we don't, we don't even go on to the next level. We just return the current level. That's it. That's my answer. I'm sticking to it. Let's see, let's see if it works. <laughs> I feel like there's probably some edge cases I didn't account for. Let's see. No, apparently I got it. Um, yeah. Do it recursively? I mean, I did technically solve this one in, in seven minutes. Does it make sense to do this recursively? I mean, the function takes in the bonus and the price. I guess technically we could return. I don't. I don't think I don't think we should do it recursively. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. No, I'm going to say we won't do it. OK. Um, great. I think I'm done solving katas. Now, I could do some other things, because I actually wanted to record a um, uh, a TypeScript tutorial on Express with TypeScript. So I might do that, but I might do it over on Twitch. So I'm going to see if um, Twitch is back up. What's up, Ahmed? Welcome in. We're investigating the issue, preventing users from going live. <laughs> People saying, hurry up. It's so funny because like, it's interesting to see how many people are affected by this. They said they resolved it. Um, that's what I was looking for. Um, I just, yeah, we just haven't found the time to play a coding game uh, recently. Where do they say they've resolved it? I guess I can always try. And if it doesn't work, I'll go drink a beer. Because <laughs> I'm kind of really annoyed that I couldn't go live on Twitch. Um, to the Twitch support one. Well, they've res they've resolved it once today before. So, um, oh, four minutes ago. Why are these out of order? I 
I just, I just don't know how Twitter works. But yeah, I see the response there. <laughs> We're beginning to see recovery. Cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to go live on Twitch. I'll see you all over there. Um, Twitch.tv slash Coding Garden. Head on over. Um, and if I can't go live, you won't see me there. But uh, definitely check out the, the schedule. I, I'll be live on Friday uh, on Twitch um, if I can't go live tonight. Um, and you can view my schedule there. But hopefully, I'll see you over there in like five, 10 minutes. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, this was fun. Um, like I said, all of the code I wrote will be pushed up to GitHub. Um, so for, feel free to check it out there. And we'll see you next time. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.